Hi, it's Richard Dwyer from richarddwyer.com. I'm a lawyer in Northern California. On Monday, we're going to have the first presidential debate between Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton and Republican nominee Donald Trump. Now, first, let me talk about my own bias. Right? I'm libertarian. My candidate is Gary Johnson this election cycle. So I really have no horse in the race with regard to this debate, right? I see both of these two as Keynesians who are promising us, right, nine-figure, nine-figure infrastructure, developmental spending, right, to supposedly rejuvenate the economy, right? I personally don't see much difference between the two candidates. But here's what I expect in Monday's debate. And I think it's going to be a significant one because that first debate always generates big numbers. You have a lot of people on the fence and they want to see the candidates in the same room deal with the same questions, right? That first debate is either going to validate someone's belief in a candidate, right? Sway an undecided voter or discredit a candidate. So, first, because a lot of Donald Trump's aura is based on his perceived wealth, Right? And because there are those who are wealthy who question Donald Trump, right? many people want Donald Trump to release his tax returns. I think people sense that anyone involved in financing real estate is going to have <clears throat> a sizable amount of debt. Right? Whether it's Donald Trump, whether it's Robert Kiyosaki, if you follow his uh, reasoning on rich dad, poor dad, that debt is good. Right? So people like Mark Cuban are pushing for Donald Trump to release his income taxes, have even offered money for Donald Trump to explain his economic theories in a sit-down disclosure. I'm expecting Hillary Clinton to drop the names of wealthy people who endorse her campaign. I wouldn't be surprised if either Mark Cuban or Warren Buffett physically appears at the debate to give the viewers, you know, visual proof that people with money, at least some of them, support Hillary Clinton. Now, by contrast, Trump is going to try to paint, and I believe this is his main game. Right? He's going to try to paint the career politician as a hypocrite. Right? I believe the central thesis of the Trump campaign is not ideological. Right? It's not based on domestic or foreign policy. I actually feel the central thesis of the Trump campaign is to show that career politicians, whether it's Jeb Bush or, in this case, Hillary Rodham Clinton, have failed you. That they've taken positions that were politically expedient at one point in time, purely for political reasons, right? And that they don't have any depth in their convictions. They're saying whatever they need to to get votes to get through the current election cycle, right? That they're really saying whatever they can with their real agenda to be to support the wealthy, the powerful, the people favored by the status quo at any given moment in time. Put simply, what Trump is trying to do is to show you, as he's put it, that the game is rigged. And that the people doing the rigging are his political 
opponents. In my opinion, that's the number one theme of the Trump presidency. Right? So, Donald Trump already has leaked, and this has been confirmed by the individual Trump has discussed, that he's going to have Jennifer Flowers with him at the debate. Right? Don't be surprised if Trump doesn't show up with not just Jennifer Flowers, but Paula Jones, perhaps Juanita Broderick, right? People who have accused Bill Clinton of sexual assault at a minimum, right? With Juanita Broderick, it's rape. Right? Or having a marital affair with them, being a longtime mistress in Jennifer Flowers' case. Right? Trump's argument, and it's a compelling one in my opinion, is that Hillary Clinton facilitated, knew about, and did what she could to protect the public image of Bill Clinton knowing full well that the women making the accusations against him were credible. Right? The idea is that, in a sense, Hillary Clinton was like Bill Cosby's wife. Right? That Hillary is a hypocrite when she tries to talk about being on the side of women, right? That the idea that her campaign is about gender equality isn't supported by her own treatment of the victims of her husband's philandering, right? So, someone who would be very powerful um, as a visual at the debate would be Paula Jones, right? Who, you know, was, how do I put it? Um, the president settled with, we know that, paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to President Clinton, right? And who was acting in an official capacity when she was really a victim of workplace harassment of the grossest kind, right? Sexual harassment on the job. Don't be surprised if someone who has made or been a part of that doesn't show up with Trump. Now, let me say this. Trump's running the campaign as a political outsider. He's taking on Washington. But what people need to realize is that Trump is an Ivy Leaguer. All right, let's be clear here. Trump's from a wealthy family, and he went to the University of Pennsylvania's very prestigious Wharton School of Business. Right? Wharton remains, Wharton was in Trump's day and remains today, one of the elite business schools in the country. So Trump's not just an Ivy Leaguer. He didn't go to undergrad. He went to grad school in the Ivy League. Let me say this too. Trump is not a guy who just wandered onto the stage who's shooting from the hip, who is being spontaneous in expressing his points of view. I know it seems that way, right? But people need to realize that Trump has researched his positions, right? That this isn't a guy trying to get the next reality TV show. This isn't a guy trying to just get his name out there who's using the presidential race as a vehicle to do so in the hopes of selling the next 
real estate development project. Now this guy understands that people see him as a political lightweight, at least, right? Inexperienced green. But that he actually has researched the issues so that he's one or two steps ahead of the critics who are underestimating him. So, many of his outrageous proposals are A. Proposals he knows sound outrageous. That B. He knows his opponent has already proposed or supported in a hypocritical manner for political purposes. So C, he can't be attacked in a credible manner on a proposal that was previously supported by his opponent. Right? And D, his opponent will look bad, awful, to core supporters once they are reminded of that candidate's prior position. Right? What Trump's game really is, is to say something that sounds wacky, that upon investigation, we later learn was actually the position of his opponent, right? I believe, as I've said, the takeaway is that the opponent is just saying what he or she needs to say to get elected to support an elite at the expense of the public that Trump is trying to get to vote for him. So, as we know, Trump has proposed a wall on the southern border of the United States. Now, most of my friends I, are diehard Democrats, right? I myself used to be a very reliable Democrat, right? Back in the day, I voted for Walter Mondale, right? I voted for Jesse Jackson in a primary. Right? I voted for countless Democrats over the course of my life. I'm from a family where both parents were Democrats. Right? So my friends, going back to when I was a kid, right? my friends are hardcore progressives, hardcore Democrats, most of them. And they're completely offended by the idea that any politician would support a border wall or fence across hundreds of miles of the southern border. But what I found is that my friends are completely unaware of the fact that Hillary Clinton voted for the Secure Fence Act of 2006. That act would have built 700 miles of a fortified fence along the southern border of the United States. Right, so when I talk with friends, right, I'm African American, friends of hmm, several I races. Find the answer to the question I heard. Friends of several races will come to me and will say, Isn't this obvious proof that Trump is a racist? Right? When I talk further with them, they have no idea that this used to be Hillary Clinton's position. Right? A second issue, and I believe Trump's game is, you know, the crowd's going to ooh and ah. There's going to be a moment in the debate where this comes out. Right? Hillary really can't. Deny it because it's part of the public record. She used to refer to it, by the way, in campaign speeches. So what's going to happen is, however clumsily it's presented, once it comes out that Hillary also supported 
a border, wall, or fence. Right? That's not going to get votes for Hillary, folks. That's going to make Hillary look like she is inauthentic. Right? That's Trump's real goal here. Right? That Hillary is crooked Hillary. If Hillary tries to explain why in the past she said things like, I'm optimally against illegal immigration and voted for this Secure Fence Act, she's going to look on the defensive. The second issue, the birther issue. You know, Trump has argued that Hillary was the person who started the birther movement. Now that's not completely accurate. The problem though is it highlights the plausible deniability, right, that Hillary has set up. The layers that voters believe Hillary has put in place to avoid responsibility for her actions. So, we have former Clinton, Bill Clinton, White House worker, Sidney Blumenthal, who also has worked for the Clinton Foundation. In other words, the job he did in the Clinton White House was so good, he's such a friend, that he segued into the Clinton Foundation. And we have reliable sources talking about how Sidney Blumenthal went around asking them to investigate, right, Obama's birthplace. He apparently told a journalist with McClatchy newspapers, flatly, that Obama was born in Kenya, right? Understand, just like the fence issue is a bad one for Hillary because of her past support for the border fence. The birther issue is a bad one for Hillary because it's going to remind a lot of us that people close to Hillary were contacting reporters to try to challenge Barack Obama's birthplace. It's going to make Hillary look hypocritical. Here again, that's Trump's real agenda, right? Gay rights. You might recall Peter Thiel, the entrepreneur, who's also gay, spoke at the GOP convention. Right? The moment was so unique. The tone was so unique that even people on the other side of the aisle, like Rachel Maddow, who supports Hillary Clinton, was struck by the moment talked about how it was a big moment in the development of the GOP in the country, a big step forward, right? It seemed like a very bold move by Donald Trump because the GOP hasn't been associated with gay rights, right? Well, I believe the issue again is gonna hurt Hillary Clinton because while Donald Trump is blazing new trails in terms of, you know, embracing people like Peter Thiel at the convention, you might recall too Donald Trump talking about what a tragedy it was in Orlando, the shooting at the gay nightclub, right? While, while Donald Trump is doing things that place him on the cutting edge of the GOP in terms of gay rights, right? Folks are going to be reminded at the debate that the Clintons, Bill and Hillary, supported Don't Ask, Don't Tell for years, right? Many gay people in the military got negatively impacted by that. I understand the argument is, hey, that was a step up from what existed before. But it's just the idea that that's going to remind people 
of the triangulation the Clintons used to run. Right? The idea is that if you believe strongly in gay rights, why weren't you for gay ser serving openly in the military and gay marriage when it was not politically expedient? Right? It's going to make, you know, Hillary look like she's on the slow end of the social acceptance curve, not at the forefront. Let's also talk about race. Now understand here, a lot of my progressive friends have no clue that Hillary Clinton to this day supports the death penalty. Right now that you have DNA testing and now that you have innocence projects all over the country, you literally have people on death row being exonerated based on DNA evidence. And a lot of those people tend to be people of color, black and brown, right? A lot of the people, very bad eyewitness identification. Some of the cases involve intimate crimes like rape, where the ID was off. Nonetheless, Hillary to this day supports the death penalty. Right, let's go further. We all know today that crack and cocaine are really the same drug, right? The difference is that cocaine is the white collar version of that drug, right? Cocaine is the version of that drug that people are using in wealthier neighborhoods than the neighborhoods where folks are using crack. Right? I believe the differing treatment legally that the Clintons supported, right? Heavy sentences, and I mean heavy sentences for crack use, comparatively light sentences for cocaine use, is really indefensible by today's progressive point of view, right? It seems unduly biased against people of color, right? Poorer people, there's a class bias, there's a racial bias, right? Because let's face it, people of color don't have the money per capita in the United States on average that white people do. I believe that Hillary Clinton here again is going to talk about, you know, the importance of fighting crime. She doesn't have the gift of gap. Right? She's going to sound scripted. She's going to sound rehearsed. She's also going to sound like a hypocrite. You're going to hear things like, you know, oh, this legislation was an important transitional piece of legislation. Right? It was passed because at the time it was the best we could do. Right? You always hear that when she talks about gay rights. You're going to hear that when she talks about, you know, um, race and the differing sentences, the differing criminal liability for crack convictions and cocaine convictions. Right? Keep in mind, too, Hillary Clinton in the 90s used to talk about super predators. And we knew she wasn't talking about white collar drug dealers in Beverly Hills and Bel Air, right? We knew she wasn't talking about them. You knew she was talking about people living a life of crime in poorer neighborhoods. So I believe that this debate is almost rigged. In my opinion, it's Donald Trump's to lose, right? These two have done what they could to keep people like Gary Johnson and Jill Stein off the stage, right? You don't really have a real progressive on stage, nor do you have 
a real fiscal conservative on stage. Right? You don't. What you have is a career politician going up against a guy who can say, look, I'm not part of the political class. This is even as Donald Trump openly admits, and he'll admit it, I'm sure, on Monday night, that he gave money to the Clinton Foundation. Right? Finally, let's talk about campaign finance reform. How could anyone, really, how could anyone run a foundation where they're accepting donations from people who are then asking for political favors make the argument that they're against Citizens United? Right? It's a head scratcher. Hillary Clinton is going to try to say, look, <clears throat> you know, I'm against Citizens United. We should have hard caps on campaign donations while at the same time conceding, as her husband already has, that some of the people who gave uncapped money to the foundation expected to get something on the back end, financed in part by regular taxpayers, right? Whether it's an ambassadorship, right? Whether it's some break on some deal, some special access to some event, right? Lincoln bedroom back when Bill was president, whatever. You know, the point is simply, she's gonna look bad on that issue, right? Any attempt to draw a distinction between what she says and what she does is going to fall on deaf ears, right? So, in my opinion, those of you underestimating Donald Trump are making a big mistake, right? The problem with being the presumptive front runner for several months, right? The problem with having the Democratic National Committee on your side, right? As we're finding out they were, right? Uh, the problem with scaring away all of the contenders except for Bernie Sanders, right? The person who really seems to have run based on ideology, right? A person who wouldn't dream of taking millions of dollars from Wall Street for 20 and 30 minute speeches as Hillary Clinton has done, right? The problem with being Hillary Clinton is that you're an easy target. Most of the people running for the GOP nomination knew that they would likely be facing Hillary Clinton because, of course, parts of the game are rigged, right? There are things called superdelegates. They knew Hillary had rounded up all of the superdelegates, right? They understood that Bernie would have to do far better than Hillary just to get a tie, right? Just to get a tie. And so, in my opinion, Donald Trump shrewdly has looked at Hillary's past positions and has tailored his own campaign platform to take advantage of her hypocrisy in claiming to be pro-immigration while at the same time supporting the Secure Fence Act of 2006. Right? I think we all intuitively know that something's wrong with her husband meeting with the Attorney General of the United States privately on a plane, right? Private jet, worse yet, right? While Hillary was under criminal investigation, right? Hackers have been releasing emails showing things that, in my opinion, contradict Hillary's public stories, right? So 
let me just close by saying I know many people trust me they're my social circle I know many people view Donald Trump as a loon I don't support him right I don't but then again I'm a libertarian I I like free trade right I'm an immigrant I like more open borders I like work visas right um, I think you're making a mistake in thinking he's gonna look like a neophyte in this first debate the expectations favor Trump because we're expecting a more professional more experienced performance from Hillary Clinton that's dangerous because that means that all Trump has to do is to come close to Hillary and he will have exceeded our expectations. Whereas Hillary has to win by a wider margin for her to satisfy ours. Right? Well, all I'm saying is on the merits, Hillary is facing an uphill challenge. Right? How do you call Trump a racist? for suggesting a border wall that you yourself have supported in the past, right? It's a problem for Hillary, a big one. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know emotions are running hot all over, right? I know Gary Johnson supporters like myself are wondering how someone can be on the ballot in all 50 states yet not have an opportunity to participate in a presidential debate. I know Hillary supporters believe strongly that Trump is a racist, he is a political neophyte, he is unrehearsed, he's dangerous, we don't want him with the ability to put his finger on the nuclear button. And I know the Trump supporters, right? I've spoken with many of you too. Believe that the game's been rigged, right? That the only people able to get a home loan right now are the powerful and the wealthy who are practically getting free money, <clears throat> right? That your money in the bank is at risk of being used for a bail-in, right? That the middle class that we remember, many of the professions that existed a generation ago when we were young kids, no longer exist because of trade deals, right? Trade deals that are unbalanced, that are creating wealth for our trading partners and not for us, right? Just understand, even on trade, Hillary Clinton opposed CRAFTA. Hillary Clinton currently opposes the TPP that's favored by Barack Obama. Right? Neither Hillary nor Donald Trump is a free trader. Right? You don't have a lot of distinction between the two. They both oppose the TPP. Right? Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by. Let's hope the next president of the United States, whoever it is, knows what they're doing and is able to get this debt under control. Thanks for stopping by.